Today, I want to both introduce a new subtopic within our course, as well as introduce a crucial uh, distinction. It's going to be really important for the rest of this week's video. So I'm hoping uh, that you are watching this video first. If you aren't, then um, maybe this video will make sense of some of the other stuff you heard in the longer uh, videos on the arguments for God's existence. Uh, okay, so let's get down to this distinction that I want to make in this video. The distinction is between the necessary and the contingent. Okay, the necessary and the contingent. Now, we want to draw this distinction across at least three kinds of things, and I'll introduce the most, I think the most intuitive one first. So let's talk about necessary truths versus contingent truths. And then we're going to talk about necessary events versus contingent events. And then we're going to talk about necessary beings versus contingent beings. The reason I'm starting with truths is that it's easy to think of necessary truths. It's harder to think of necessary events, and it's harder to think of necessary beings, at least without talking about God. And we're trying to come up with um, sort of uncontroversial examples to kind of get at the distinction before we get down into the topic du jour, that is the existence of God. So let's talk about necessary versus contingent truths. A necessary truth is one that had to be true. It could not fail to be true. There's no way that it could be false. So three ways of saying the same thing. I'm hoping you get at uh, one of them makes sense for you. A contingent truth is one that is true, but could have easily been false. So to just recap real quick, necessary truth is something that's true and could not have been false. Contingent truth is still true, has that in common with necessary truths, but could not have possibly been false. Sorry, but could have possibly been false. Okay. Let's give some examples. A necessary truth, you might argue a very good candidate at least, is two plus two equal four. Basically any basic arithmetic, arithmetical truths, and probably the truths of pure mathematics in general are necessary truths. Uh, there are certain logical truths uh, that are necessary truths. P or not P is taken to be one such truth. Every claim is either true or false. That, that claim itself is true. And uh, it has to be true. There's, you, you can't give me any possible scenario in which it fails to be true. Um, every surface is two-dimensional. That seems to be true. Uh, and necessarily true. You could not, it couldn't fail to be true. There, it, there, it's not a, there's not some possible surface out there that's not at least two dimensional. Um, we could keep giving examples. Now, some truths are very strong truths. It would be very hard for them to be false, but they still could be false, right? So, possibility is cheap in one sense. It doesn't take much for a thing to be possible, right? So the, the law of gravity is true. Uh, other truths about the way our physical world works, uh, the law of inertia is true. And it's we cannot imagine any scenario in our current universe in which they fail to be true. Again, now I'm saying all this at the surface level. Maybe uh, physics people know better than this. I don't know. But take whatever physical law uh, you want, and it's true, and it's really hard to imagine it being false at any place or time in our universe, but it's not necessarily true, because you can imagine the universe happening uh, as well as, let me give you one example um, that we're going to discuss in one of the later videos. There are such things as fundamental physical constants that physicists, and especially theoretical physicists, talk about, and these are certain uh, values that um, things like the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, I think the strength of the gravitational force is one of these things. And what these are is they're very deep um, constants or values within the universe that are set a certain way and don't change, but they didn't have to be set that way. Uh, they could have been set a different way. 
physicists disagree on what it would take for them to be said a different way, um, but they could have been. But the way our universe is, once they're set a certain way, they're not going to change. And uh, they, it actually takes those fundamental constants being set that way for life or even sometimes matter to develop, right? And so there's a sense in which if they were much different, we wouldn't even be here to see them being different, right? Because life could have never developed. But it's still possible. There's still a world out there. There's still a, a possibility that they had not been set at the place that they're set, right? Similarly with uh, the law of inertia or Newton's laws or whatever, uh, they happen to be true in this world. They're not gonna change. You're never gonna see them change. You're never gonna see them fail. Your children and grandchildren are never gonna see them fail, but they're contingent in the sense that a un the, uh, when the universe was created or when it came about, when it came into existence, uh, they could have been different right? It would have been really hard. It's a really weird world and we wouldn't be there to see them being different probably because life could have never developed, but they could have been. But you can't imagine a scenario even when two plus two fails to be four. It's a little controversial. There are some philosophers who think that uh, God could have made the laws of mathematics differently, but even most theists, even most philosophers who believe in God don't think that's true. They think that the truths of mathematics are necessary truths. They could not fail to be true. Uh, but you might notice something else common to those necessary truths. These, some of them are truths that are true by definition. So let me give you a really basic one that doesn't have to do with math or geometry or logic. Um, all bachelors are unmarried. That is a necessary truth because it's true by definition. That's what a bachelor is. You will not be able to find me a case of, an, uh, of a married bachelor in the world and you won't be able to find me any possible instance, even go to the craziest world you can think of, uh, in which a bachelor is married. And now you might try to get clever here and say, well, what, yeah, maybe you, and if there's some possible world out there where they define bachelor differently. Well, then you're not talking about bachelors, because I'm, when I say bachelor, I mean an unmarried man. So a bachelor, uh, all bachelors are unmarried, necessary truth, could not fail to be true could not be false, has to be true, right? Again, saying all the same things in a different way. Okay, so that's necessary versus contingent truths. I guess, let me give you a, 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 a further afield contingent truth. I gave you one that was technically contingent, but it's hard to imagine it being false. But uh, the fact that I made this video tonight is a contingent truth. I did make this video tonight it could have been false. Uh, in fact, most of the truths of our everyday lives are contingent truths, right? The fact that I made myself a drink, the fact that I ate tacos for dinner, the fact that I woke up at 8.38, the fact that I have a son named Jim Gideon, the fact that I have a daughter named Bobby, the fact that I have kids at all, these are all contingent truths, right? They could have been false, right? Uh, and even the ones that are deeply part of my life, or contingent truths. My kids define me in a way, um, but I could have not had kids, right? If I had not gotten married or if I had been infertile or if whatever, we could, uh, we could sit here and list a hundred different scenarios in which I fail to have kids. Uh, so lots of contingent truths. There are some necessary truths. Uh, let's talk about necessary versus contingent events. Now here's the reason I kept this one for a second. It's very hard to imagine a necessary event. Contingent events are events that happened but could have failed to happen. Again, the definitions are going to be exactly kind of isomorphic or analogous here uh, to use some fancy, throw some fancy terminology at you. Um, an, a contingent event is going to be one that could have failed, that happened but could have failed to happen, didn't have to happen. Necessary event is a, something that happened that had to happen. You can't imagine a scenario in which it didn't happen. Uh, my opening my old archaic flip phone, that was an event and it happened. I just did it. Could have failed to happen. Now here's the reason I kept this for a second is I'm having a hard time thinking of any plausible necessary event, right? Even think about the, the start of the universe. Did it have to happen? Probably not. You could maybe, I think some people might argue that it had to happen, but I, 
I don't know of any such arguments. Um, and if the start of the universe was contingent, then basically everything that happens after that in the universe, uh, basically every event, because all events happen beca only because the universe started to exist, are contingent because the start of the universe is contingent. So it's very hard to imagine a necessary event. Um, if you are religious, if you are, if you are some sort of theist, it might not be so hard because uh, we typically think that certain features of God and maybe even certain actions of God are necessary. He could not have failed to have done them, right? So philosophers, or at least theistic philosophers, like to argue about whether God had to create something. Now, I think, I think the majority view is that he didn't. Uh, he could have failed to create. He could have decided not to create anything. And it would just be at least on the Christian view, it'd be, you know, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So there would be community. He wouldn't be all alone. Uh, on non-Trinitarian views, God would be the only thing that existed. Um, but if you maybe even on such views, God existing, if you can call that an event, it doesn't really seem like an event if it's outside of time, uh, or at least before the uh, creation of time, depending on your view of time. We're getting super heady here, but maybe that could be an event if you think it's an event uh, that is necessary if you're a theist. And if you're not a theist, uh, it gets harder to think of necessary events as examples or examples of necessary events. Okay, now finally, this is going to be maybe the most important necessary versus contingent distinction, necessary beings versus contingent beings. So a contingent being is one that exists, but could have failed to exist. A necessary being is one that exists, but could not have failed to exist. Okay, so again, and again, this is why I left this one for last, the only really plausible necessary being is God. So uh, I wanted to try to start giving the distinction uh, with examples that um, didn't necessarily relate to God or the, the topic of this week. Um, but now we're at the point where to imagine a necessary being, uh, at least, or to imagine an example of a necessary being, we kind of have to go to God. But think of contingent beings first, beings that exist but could have failed to exist. That is all of us. Every single human being, uh, every single animal, every single non-human person, uh, angels, demons, whatever you want to say, aliens, if there are aliens, Every single thing is, uh, every single being that we can think of in those ways are, those are all contingent beings. I exist, obviously. Uh, I could have failed to exist. I could have never existed, right? In fact, uh, because the particular sperm and egg that created me are kind of essential to my existence, if my parents had waited a month or a week or whatever, uh, or maybe in a, a few minutes or hours to conceive, I would have never existed. It would have been a different sperm, maybe the same egg, but maybe a different egg that came to uh, create the, the human being that they created and it wouldn't have been me. Uh, maybe it wouldn't have even been me if it had been the same sperm and the same egg at a different time. I don't know, but let's just, let's stop thinking about that. The point is I didn't have to exist. Right. In fact, I was just considering cases where my parents conceived at a different time, not at the time that they conceived me, but my parents didn't have to conceive at all. My dad, for example, was a career army officer and very narrowly missed going to Vietnam. Uh, if he had been born a year or two earlier, he would have gone because he would have wanted to go. He, he wanted to go. He was, uh, I think he graduated college out of ROTC in 73. And so very likely if he had been graduating a year or two earlier, he may have gone, he might have died and he might have never conceived any children at all. And then I wouldn't exist. So uh, it's kind of crazy to reflect on the radical contingency of all of our existences. Uh, it's very imp inc incredibly improbable that any of us should exist, uh, much less uh, impossible that we shouldn't exist. So we, we exist, we're contingent though, because we easily could have failed to exist. What theists and arguments for God 
are going to argue is that God is a necessary being that God and that God, not only that is the only necessary being and really the only plausible necessary being they'll argue God exists. They'll say, and as opposed to literally everything else that exists, which is contingent, God is not contingent. He is necessary. He exists and he could not have failed to exist. There is no possible world where he doesn't exist. There's no possible course of events in which he doesn't exist. Uh, again, just trying to say the same thing in a different way, uh, a few different ways so that it'll click some way. Okay, so that is the necessary versus contingent distinction drawn across truths, necessary versus contingent truths, events, necessary versus contingent events, and beings, necessary versus contingent beings. That's going to be really important in the videos to come, or if you're watching this last, the videos that you've seen, uh, because at least one of the arguments, the argument from um, first cause, uh, is going to depend on this distinction, arguing that uh, because the universe or the causal order is contingent, we need a necessary being to explain it. Okay, so that's where we'll stop now. Yeah.